Drove it on 40s all the way across the country. Here we are, Chocolate Thunder again, driving by, see this uh, second gen Tacoma, and here he is wearing our hat. So what's your name? Brendan. Brendan, Trevor, WFO. Nice to meet you. Um, I like that you're repping our stuff and that you got a second gen. Now we don't have our second gen kit out yet, but oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, as soon as I walk up to the guy to talk to him, what's he hand me? Silver bullet and the mountains are blue. You know, so I could already tell he's our kind of guy. So where'd you come from? Jacksonville, Florida. So Jacksonville, Florida, you couldn't be further across the country. No. And uh, so I assume you have a brand new Duramax and a trailer and you load this up and you drove across the country towing it, right? No. Hell no, he didn't. I drove this thing. Drove it on 40s, beadlocks, all the way across the country. Yes, I did. How long did it take you to get across the country? We left Thursday night and got here Sunday night. Four days straight. Four days. And uh, did you stop in hotels or you just sleep and keep driving? So the first night we stopped in an Alabama Bucky's parking lot. Yeah. After sleeping in the trucks that first night, we're like, no. Nah. We need to stop at a hotel the next, next, next few nights. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> All right, well, tell me about your truck. What year is it? It's a uh, 2008 Toyota Tacoma with a factory V6 manual. So, uh, not many, there's not a lot of manual trucks out there. So, crew cab manual 08. Yes. And uh, had, I assume it had IFS and lifted. IFS and, you know. So, what kind of wheeling in Florida do you have to warrant doing a solid axle and all this? So, what started this whole solid axle was building up my IFS and I'm always breaking parts. You know, I can't push the truck how I want to push it, so I just cut it out and threw on a 05 plus Super Duty axle. And for the type of wheeling that I would like to do, we have to travel out of state to do it. So most of the Florida guys are Florida mud guys, big tall trucks, oh, yeah. mud tires. This is actually a California style truck. This is a rock crawler. It looks like it's ready for Moab, Sand Hollow, Rubicon, hammers. Um, so you're completely out of the box in Florida. Yes. Yeah. So um, this is second gen Tacoma. So tell us what axle you used in here. So I used a uh, 05 plus Super Duty. It's actually out of an 08 truck. Okay. Uh, 538 Yukon gears. Yep. Got a Detroit uh, locker inside. Uh, rear end Detroit as well. Rear end is a Detroit also with a 538. Okay. Ring and pinion. And then I see you got the Artec Weldon uh, arm kit. That's actually uh, Barnes. Barnes. Okay. Barnes with an Artec. Uh, Pan hard bar. Okay. Like and then hydro assist. Hydro assist from PSC. Yep. And just regular Toyota box on the frame, right? Yes. Now, something I really like here is uh, you got your track bar way out so that you can get your track bar uh, length and, your, and yes. your drag link length really close to the same. And the air bumps. Looks like you're sitting on about four inches of up travel on this thing. Right about four and a half. So, uh, you got frame plates on here. And then uh, what size are your coilovers? These are 14, and a, 14 inch coilovers, 2.5 diameter. So I noticed that you mounted your coilover mount right above the lower link. Yes. Okay, and being the fact that you cut all the mounts and brackets off the Super Duty axle uh, to get the truss in there, right? Yes. Hey, so how long did it take you to cut all the brackets off the Super Duty? Did, a long time. A long time. Did you do it yourself? Yes, I did. So what kind of tools do you use? Cut off wheel, so first sawzall? So I started off with a sawzall. Yeah. Then I was using my little four inch cut off wheel and that wasn't cutting it. So I ran to Harbor Freight, grabbed the seven inch cut off wheel and just started going to town and it made it work. So you didn't have a shop build this, right? No, this is all in my little house garage. So you are the true, you know, do-it-yourself builder, building your axle, you know, welding all your brackets in, cut the solid axle out of it, right? So everybody at home who thinks it's easy to three-link with a Super Duty axle, it's not, is it? It's not. How many hours do you think you have just getting the brackets off, the truss on, and the link mounts on? At least 30 or 40, at right? At least, at yeah. least 30 or 40. Yeah, but once it's done, it's sweet, but that's a lot of work. So. The bumper's nice and high and tight, um, light built in. 
So your three link is on the passenger side. Yes. So a lot of people put it on the driver's side. On this one, it fits in the passenger side. Clears the exhaust fine? Yes, it does. I, uh, I shimmied it in there and I just had to trim a little bit off the flange and she flexes right up in between the flange and the uh, frame. So how does it drive with the three link and no sway bar, you know, leaf springs in the rear pretty, pretty, handle pretty good? She drives like a lifted truck. Drives like a lifted truck, yeah. But she drives good enough to drive from Florida to California in four days. Yes. Yeah, nice. Um, so moving to the back. Did you build the sliders or did you buy these? These are um, a DIY kit from 4x Innovations. Okay, those are sweet. And then looking underneath here, you still have uh, just single case? Yes, it's a FJ case with a twin stick mod. Okay, so FJ case with twin stick mod and 538 gears with a manual transmission. Yes. You think it's gonna be uh, low enough to crawl? I know you're going out to Sand Hollow after this. It, it's low, but I would like to do, add a doubler in there. Get a doubler in there. So in the rear, Sterling with a truss, um, then once again, 538's in that one, yes, right? Yes, 538's. Yep. And uh, outboard shock mounts. So you're still running eight on 170 on your wheels, front and rear, so it's all junkyard Ford parts, yep. Um, now, you got to bring a lot of stuff with you, huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, all the parts and tools and everything to fix this thing, you know, on the trail. So, I noticed right now you have a two-piece rear drive shaft. Yes, I do. But your spare is a one-piece. Yes. What one is smoother going down the highway? Smoother going down the highway is a single piece. Is the single piece. Yes. But you kept the two piece because if you're going to be doing some wheeling for breakover stuff. So, did you drive out here with this I drove on it? the single piece and hop on the trail, swap in the two-piece. That way if you smash it or wreck it or whatever, you got this to get home. Yes, I do. Like when you're, you know, 3,000 miles away from home and you're going to wheel your truck and beat on it, that's a little sketchy, right? It is, I also got two more front drive shafts and another spare shaft at the Airbnb. Now is the front drive shaft made from a factory Toyota drive shaft? Yes, it's a factory. It's the stock actually, one? It's actually from a stock Fort Gen four-wheel drive, okay. uh, forerunner. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> as you said, you got the FJ case in it, right? Yes. Um, and you didn't have to do the FJ case with the manual transmission because it still has the speed sensor in the back of the transfer case, right? Yes, it does. So one of the things about these Gen 2 kits, and we're just developing ours right now, I know everybody's been waiting for ours, and just be patient, it's coming, but it's getting the electronics to work. So, I mean, we have to be honest with people who are building these trucks. So on your dash, you have uh, like a service, uh, or a brake light, right? I have a brake light. And then what other lights do you I have? I have an ABS light on, uh -huh. which that was on from when I bought the truck. Uh -huh. And I also have my four-wheel drive light on. Because you swapped the transfer I swapped case. The, I swapped the case out and I didn't do too much research about it because I wasn't worried, really worried about it. Yeah. But for some people that would want to have the light turn off, there is there is a way to make the FJ way, case go in. Yes. Yeah. Um, but with being a manual, that doesn't affect shifting, transmission, no, drivability, and your speedometer works, right? The speedometer works because it's on the tail end of the uh, the FJ case. and the and the manual transmission case both have the speed sensor on the tail of the transfer case. Yeah. So Florida, fully built, full wheeler. You're wheeling here and you're gonna wheel in Sand Hollow. Have you hit any trails here yet? Uh, we hit, we were over at Cougar Buttes for a little bit okay. yesterday. Yeah. And uh, we did the first probably 100 yards of Bullfrog and my starter went out. We might have to, uh, we might have to get you on a trail tonight. Let's do some, it. Something like Turkey Claw or, do it. Uh, you know, one of these easy, you know, middle of the road trails just so you can say you did it at the hammers, you know? Um, Anything else you want to add on this build that we missed? I mean, uh, it's a pretty sweet build. Uh, bumper, front and rear bumpers were custom made by did, me in my house. Like, oh, you did house. build those? Yes, the That's front and awesome. rear bumpers. So how long did it take you to do it in your driveway? Or do you do it in your garage, obviously? About four months. Four months, okay. That's working a full-time job and juggling life. That's awesome. Well, I'm telling you what, uh, I had no idea that I was gonna find a truck that drove from Florida uh, to here. How, so how did you hear about WFO? How do you know about us? Um, social media. I'm sorry our kit wasn't out for your <laughs> truck yet, but you know, 
let us know if you need anything else we'll definitely hook you up well thanks thanks for talking with us and uh, thank you hopefully hope you enjoy your time at king of the hammers oh i will all right